Welcome back. We're continuing to look at the Sermon on the Mount. This week we're taking a look at fasting. I don't know how often you give thought to fasting. Um, I'll tell you, I don't fast very often, primarily because when I don't get uh, regular meals, um, I run the risk of getting migraines. So for me, to some degree, the thought of fasting in an extended sense, probably not a great idea. Now, what it could mean is adjusting a fast and saying, you know, maybe it's not overindulging, or maybe it's, you know, I'm gonna pause and prayerfully skip a meal. But the, the idea behind the fast is that there's some intent behind it, and we'll talk a little bit about some of the possible reasons for doing so. But let's take a look in Matthew chapter six, starting at verse 16, where Jesus talks about it this way. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. Man, he's letting it rip right away. For they disfigure their faces, that their fasting may be seen by others. It's three weeks, there's a theme going on here, right? Don't perform your spiritual disciplines. They're for you and God, they're not a performance piece. All right, continuing. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. Boy, he's hitting that one again. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. What's the purpose of a fast? It was a list I went and found, and some of the reasons why you might do it is to seek God's guidance, to express grief, to seek deliverance or protection, to express repentance and return to God, to humble yourself before God, to express concern for the work of God, to minister to the needs of others, to overcome temptation and to get it, dedicate yourself to God, or perhaps to express love and worship to God. Are those things that we perform for the sake of others? Or are they ways in which we continue to work to shape our lives after the good and gracious gifts of God? I'm gonna argue very strongly, and I think you're following me on this, that it's definitely the latter, that this is about God reshaping and working us. This is a private matter. So what Jesus is suggesting here is that when you fast, and interesting that he's not questioning if you fast, we kind of lost that practice. Perhaps that's something worth regaining. But when you fast, it's private. You keep yourself looking good. You keep yourself, you know, nobody should know that you're in the middle of this. You know, some of the time we do things where we, you know, we're, we're going on a diet and we announce what we're doing and we talk about it maybe way too much and we mention you know all the you know man I'm, I'm dieting so I'm eating less and so it's just really hard because I'm so hungry you know if you're doing it for spiritual purposes and it's to work on your relationship with God and to help you focus on that relationship that the hunger reminds you that you ought to hunger after God the performance the 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 uh, grumbling before others, the, the, the oh, look at me stuff, honestly distracts from your seeking God through withholding food from yourself in order to focus more fully on God. Must we fast? Um, I'm, I'm going to say we don't have to, but I'm going to say that if we do, and if we fast, you know, perhaps like some of us, we'll, we, we do social media fasts because we know that it gets a little bit too much and we indulge too much. And it helps to, we take that away from ourselves in order that we focus more fully on God. But again, doing that for the purpose of getting closer to God means what are we, not just what are we taking away or what are we refraining from consuming, but what are we consuming instead? So if we fast, it's not a matter of, well, I'm just going to punish myself and I'm not going to have the sandwich that I would have otherwise had, but am I consuming the Word of God instead so that I draw closer to Him rather than perform for others? Because again, all of this that we've been talking about in the Sermon on the Mount is how we practice our faith and through all these different practices, how we draw closer to Christ. That's the ultimate goal here. Hope this has been good. Blessings, and once again, I'll see you next week.